Greetings from Bangkok, Thailand, and welcome to 30 Minutes Promoting Unity in Diversity with Wani Angerer in Moving Cultures. Today, we have an amazing guest, a beautiful girl from Switzerland, and she is our guest number 260, also a beautiful number. We are very close to reach the 300 guests of this uh, talent virtual library where change makers from around the globe are telling us their stories, their journey, their challenges, their inspirations and aspirations, and how they are, they each one are transforming their life and the life of many people around them in the communities. So let's welcome Heidi to this amazing experience that is about her life and her stories. So, hi Heidi, how are you? Good morning, Wani. I'm great. Thank you very much for being here, for having that uh, discussion together. I enjoy great weather in Switzerland, a few free days before the school year ends and before um, summer vacation for all of us um, is coming closer. Thank you, Heidi, for accepting the invitation to talk about your life and what is important to you and what are you preparing for the future. So the first question is, who is Heidi Huviller? <laughs> Heidi Huviller is a clarinetist. She is a music teacher. She is um, a social, um, social entrepreneur. Um, yeah. I would say I wear many hats and I try to um, combine all of them together and all of them are related to music. Fantastic. Heidi, I know the music can on sometimes be interpreted only as an aesthetic element, but I know for you music is life. It's a manifestation of uh, everything you do and how you relate to people. Can you tell us more about that? Yeah, absolutely. I agree on that. <clears throat> For me, um, music has more kind of um, philosophical aspect um, in whatever um, I do or um, how I teach, um, how I treat music as a subject. And uh, yeah, I think it comes from, from very early. When I was a little girl and started with music, it was my escape from, from the world and it was my safe place not in the sense that i was in danger but i'm um, just for my for my um, emotional well-being and uh, since then i could build up on that and um that is um, amazing to see that i can give it to my students to my audience to people um, around the world and it, that that is very amazing so it's more um yeah it's more, more than art for me it is uh, it brings people together it can um uh, empower them to uh, discover their limits, to um, uh, overcome them, to give their best and um, to become a better person in general. So that is my opinion. Yeah, education also works a very important role on the way you use music and also how you transmit information. Let's talk about the educational aspect of your musical career. I do have um, uh, several students, so from very small, uh, like five years old, to um, a little bit more adult, like around 70 years old. And it is amazing to accompany all my students, the amazing people, on their way, on um, their way discovering the clarinet, discovering the music. Sometimes they leave the path of clarinet, um, but do another instrument uh, who fits better. Sometimes they start with 40 years or older when their career is kind of settled and they do have time. Sometimes a mother starts together with their children. And it is amazing to see the different stages um, where they are and um, what difficulties um, come along the way. So children are much different uh, in picking up an instrument than adults. And it is very interesting to see that and to, yeah, to be a part of their way um uh, discovering that instrument making it a part of their own life and getting the best out of it it is also a way of transcending a uh, personal and professional experiences for you because as a clarinet player 
you also use other wind instruments in your career. Talk, a, let us know about that transition from, I know you play saxophone also. In... Yes, I also play saxophone. I play all the different clarinets from very small to very big. So um, all kind of them clarinets and I also play um, the alto saxophone and tenor saxophone. I did it um, or I started with saxophone when I started teaching because often clarinet and saxophone are combined and um, that's when I um, discovered that um, the chances are um, good that I have more students. Um, in the first instance it was because of that and now I also like um, a lot to teach a saxophone. Um, the instruments are so related, it's so close. There are the individual um, differences but um, yeah, the music is the music and the way how we teach it, um, it's, um, yeah, it's, it's very similar for both instruments. What can you tell us about your personal sound journey? Because I know you tell stories through your music. You actually yeah. do a journey of uh, contemporary styles and also people's styles through your performance. Yeah. Tell us about that, please. It, the goal is that um, uh, our audience understands what music can transmit. So not only about the music, but also about the composers, about their life. So we do, um, uh, in the concert I do with my friends, and um, it does not matter if it's uh, with my um, piano um, player or with my trio, uh, we introduce the people to the music we play, that they can get or have a bond uh, with us, with the composer, that they see what happened in their life or with the music and that it's um, explained why the music is written like that. So I strongly believe when the people can connect to the, the piece, they listen with different ears and they get touched more, um, more deep or more easily and they will not forget that concert or they will think about um, that is the goal, isn't it? That we touch people, that we can get them and very often people are um, stuck in the work, they come from work, they are occupied with many things and they are not free to listen to the music just like that very often and sometimes music is so complex we cannot get it like that it's sometimes it's not self-explaining and then we give that little help and um, people can take that or not uh, it's up to them um, but um, mostly they are very thankful and happy about that um, in introduction or about that um, that short stories about to see the composers were people, the musicians on the stage are normal people. The music can be um, uh, an expression of our feelings, of, of, of their feelings. Um, they can find something in it or they can say, I did not like it, but it touched something. Yeah, and we have a base for discussions and um, I like that a lot. So you're practically talking about connection and how the relation is goes in two ways and sometimes okay. even more ways than two yeah. let's talk <laughs> let's talk about your passion of the use of music as a catalyzer for societies you're a change maker and you're also working in different world communities using art and music what can you tell us about that yeah, music is um, a big, um, um, yeah, it makes people equal, um, I often think. And the, um, there is sometimes that um, this understanding that um, it needs talent or that some people do not have um, uh, talent to, to play an instrument. And I, I hate that when I hear that because I believe um, everyone can play an instrument everyone is um, able to play um, uh, an instrument, but not everyone has the opportunity. And that is something um, that uh, also quite, yeah, quite uh, upsets me or makes me sad because there's so much talent distributed in the whole world. And it makes no sense to me that it is focused in Europe or um, the Western parts only. So I um, also, um, 
found through my study the opportunity to go to Africa, to Uganda, to um, um, teach there, um, to work with people who have um, already an organization, to bring instruments um, like clarinet and saxophone, and they now um, combine traditional African instruments with the Western um, uh, instruments, and it sounds amazing, and they do a great job. And uh, yeah, it connects the people. Um, no matter where we do the music together, it connects the people. Um, they have a common goal, they work towards it, and um, people who are listening to the music, to the band, to the group, they are happy, and that's the goal, to bring that joy together um, to the people. To, yeah, to unite um, communities, to unite different worlds even in that case. Yeah, practically we are also talking about a democratic approach of music and education. Because Absolutely. you are coming from a classical background, but you can also connect with people from traditional music. Or you yeah. can connect with uh, people who's doing pop music or yeah. anyone like you mentioned that is interested to be part of the process. It's sometimes not necessarily as an in instrumentalist. There is so many ways that you can take part in this journey. Can you uh, tell us what about the possibility of having more women in this world of music? Uh, I find it uh, in, very important. So in Europe, in in the Western part, uh, the women are um, equally um, represented, I would say. Um, in other parts of that world, it's not like that. So it's a man's job to do the music. And um, I would, or I do strongly encourage young women and girls um, to learn an instrument and also to convince the men that there is um, there is talent on both sides there is the will to play the instrument and when i was in uganda um the the leader of that organization is a, a very um emancipated man i would say and he um enabled the girls to play the saxophone and maybe i'm not sure i would not um, promise that or um say that for sure but most probably the girls who played the saxophone in that group were the first girls in uganda to play the saxophone so um just because an instrument is perceived as a man's instrument it does not mean it's um it's uh, not uh, possible for girls to play and with my instrument or um, in Switzerland, the, this perception still is um, still in Europe for, for some instrument like brass instrument, there are more for boys, so less girl play, um, played or the saxophone starts to change, but more boys play the saxophone than girls and for clarinet. It's a bit the other way around for flute, it changed as well. But when we look back, um, just like 20, 30 years ago, um, all the woodwind instruments were mainly played by men, not many women. They had to struggle for that as well. And um, it's kind of um, illusoric, I think, that um, we, we uh, assume that it's different in other parts of the world. They have to go that steps probably too, but we can help and show and go um, or stand there as a as an example, like that I play the clarinet and the saxophone and that there are women uh, with those instruments to show that it is um, not restricted to any gender to play an instrument, that everybody can play that. Heidi, let's talk about the music as an important element on the health sector, because we are talking about uh, rehabilitation for injuries or mental health problems, or be part of the life of elderly people. Uh, there is so many ways that we can use the music in order to uh, accompany it, you know, health and mental health situation. What is your role on that? The um, clarinet or um, woodwind, wind instruments in general are instruments that are very attached to the body. So without the brass, without um, uh, body tension, without um, the knowledge how to breath, it will not work the way it can. So um, for me, that's always interesting to see that, <clears throat> to accompany people through that, to see how personal it can become to play a woodwind instrument. When you have the piano, you put the key and there is a sound. The same for the guitar or the violin. Okay, you have to um, put the fingers on the bow, but um, 
it works without um, air. So every air instrument has a direct um, connection to the body, every wind instrument, and that makes it more personal than other instruments. And often there can come um, emotions, there can come um, other um, difficulties uh, mm -hmm. during the way. And for me, that is one of the most interesting part um, in uh, teaching my instrument. Since it is so personal to the body, um, other other difficulties um, show up, and um, in in every age stage, it's also um, different um, difficulties. So if a, an elderly person starts to learn that, um, there are um, other um, struggles or other problems than when uh, a child start uh, mm -hmm. to learn it. And um, to work with that is um, very interesting for both both parts. And when it comes to um, mental um, disease or illness, or also um, for elderly people, when it comes to um, uh, this is like Alzheimer, we know that music is um, something that helps them, that can bring memories back, that can be a very important part in um, being still a part of the society and not getting forgotten. Okay, Heidi, I'm going to bring some photos to the screen so yeah. you can walk us through. So this is um, the presentation of our conversation today. Yeah. And um, this is a beautiful uh, photo session you had. Tell us a little bit about the photographer and what was the story? I needed new pictures after I cut my hair one year ago um, that it would represent me better than it did before. So this photographer is a musician as well. He's from Germany and um, he's, uh, we studied together at the same place. And since I need pictures uh, for my professional pages or for my professional life, I do the pictures with him because he understand what I want and mm -hmm. it is um, amazing to see um, that yeah it does not need a lot it does not need a lot of makeup it does not need a lot of uh, um, photoshop um, to to show uh, who I am and that is my intention also with my picture to show who I am um, you get what you see when you when, <laughs> when they meet you <laughs> yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> And uh, we could do them the, the picture in my apartment, and I'm very happy about that. So, this was um, in Poland last year, one year ago, when he had an innovation um, class uh, together uh, with the study from a Global Leaders Program, and we were creating um, a project for the group in uh, Bielska Biala. Uh, we work together and we created um, uh, a program to bring all the as, um, associations closer together. That was the goal. And we had a nice group. So yeah, that, <laughs> that was in one of the breaks. <laughs> and uh, it was uh, exhausting. We had a lot to do, but we also had a lot of fun, as you can see here. And it was uh, amazing to meet the people from uh, from my group. With Adriana, I worked for the um, first semester and um, with Chantal for the second semester. And with Chantal, we are still um, uh, in the in the group or we started our organization Music Kenya. So okay. we found those um, teddies and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that is in Uganda. Um, last July I had um, I made a short call and asked people around um, if they have instrument that could collect four clarinets, two saxophones and one tenor saxophone and bring that um, to the children there. And so that's the first time um, they when they tried the instruments and figured out how to play it. And those four are the ones who get chosen for the clarinet. So I worked with them a lot. Everybody could uh, try all the instruments, but those four kids were the ones who could learn the clarinet. The selected ones. Yeah. That is um, in February this year. Chantal and I made um, a short trip to 
um, to Kenya to meet our partners for our organization. And that is with Mandiri, the director of the Kenya Conservatory of Music, an amazing woman who is um, doing a lot and promoting girls. And uh, they do have a, a women's only orchestra and they have a concert for the 8th of March, so the Day of Women. And I could attend uh, one of the rehearsals with the with the girls and women and it was amazing uh, such great energy that is this rehearsal yeah i was sitting there with the clarinet girls and um uh yeah introduced or um, them to some new keys uh told them how they can make it easier sometimes but they did already very well so mm -hmm. that was a nice experience fantastic and that is um, with um, my long time, long term partner, Andrea. We uh, recorded the CD. We do regularly have concerts together um, in the way I already told you about that. Mm -hmm. We um, invite the audience to join us on the journey and to know more about the composer, about the music. Yeah, an interactive approach. Yes. And this is from a concert uh, with uh, my klezmer band Freilach Trio. Um, that is the classical or the traditional um, Jewish music, uh, which I got to learn about um, some years ago. I have been traveling to Israel quite a few times to learn more about the music. And I do have a band uh, where we compose our own music and we also recorded the CD. And that's the concert last, um, I think it was in November, end of November in Mainz, in Germany. It is beautiful also to see how you interact with other creative arts. For example, we have some paintings in the background, you know, visual yeah. artists. And uh, yeah. it's important also to, to give that opportunity to the audience to, to see visual arts in movement through your sounds. I find it very important. Then it's also um, uh, a big issue or a big um, project. Uh, Andrea, my piano player, and I uh, want to follow that we combine the different arts because art is more than just listen to the music, to look at a picture or to read, um, but to combine different talents, different arts to um, something bigger that you can experience um, uh, yeah, uh, an evening that you can uh, find um, more about or what is connected. So um, over all the times the arts were connected and only by now um, that is kind of um, very separate so that you go to concert room and just listen. <clears throat> yeah, so yeah. Um, that, that there is more that you can see picture if you want that you can. Um, yeah, everything that helps your imagination. Yes, exactly. It's like a multidisciplinary concert where you can have visual artists, dancers, musicians, you can have yeah, videos. Yeah, that would be um, a big plan, exactly. Mm -hmm. We are working on that. Yeah, that's our CD where we recorded a works um, by, by George Gershwin, by York Bowen and Mark Asian um, three years, four years ago. And um, yeah, we are very proud of it. Very beautiful, beautiful photo also. Thank you. Yes, that was the New Year's concert this year. Um, when we finally could play again, so it was very unsure if the concert would be um, taking place because of COVID. That was a hard time. And we prepared a New Year's concert with, uh, in the style of uh, Strauss. So it was very, um, uh, very happy and um, nice concert with, with great colleagues. So it was a lot of fun. Very exciting also, <laughs> but it was great. <laughs> and that is the, uh, the CD cover from my Klezmer band. So the title is Everywhere and Nowhere. Um, it is based on a poem by me and all the, the pieces we recorded on that CD are by um by us, done by us. Um, either by accordion player Magdalena, by the bass player Valentin, or by me. And one of the composition is done um, by all of us. We sent it around during lockdown when you could not see and uh, rehearse with each other. So we started on a joint collaboration. Beautiful. 
Okay, yes, that was our um, orchestra. Um, the, um, it's called City Light Orchestra. It's in Lucerne, and they normally do um, the live music during a movie. So you, mm -hmm. um, there is a cinema movie, whatever. So Star Trek or Indiana Jones or whatever, and um, we play the music live with it. In that case, it was a retro festival, and we um, played with Ronan Keating. Um, is a European pop star in England, uh, English pop star, formerly boy boy thorn, I think, from a boy band and um, accompanied by orchestra. It was a beautiful experience. So it was very exciting. A band, a huge orchestra, and the singer and the fantastic light show. It was very exciting to do. Yeah, and the photo says it all. You know, you all look so energetic and so yeah, it was connected. <laughs> you know, with a pop star on the stage, yourself feel like a pop star. All the light <laughs> and people standing and clapping and uh, shouting. And it was uh, shouting. I mean, it was really, um, it was really amazing experience. Yeah, beautiful experience, and you can actually deliver that in the photograph. I think yeah. we practically reached the 30 minutes, you know, of this uh, conversation. And we so delighted, you know, to know you more. And so happy to see that you are so engaged in so different aspects of life, from personal projects, education, community, entertainment, and also allowing society to diversify their taste in connecting with other different sectors of the creative society. Thank you so much for promoting unity and diversity. And the last request will be to hear a message from your side to society. Okay, uh, first I, I want to thank you for that opportunity and it was great to talk to you. And my message is um, wherever you are or whoever you are, if you have the opportunity to learn an instrument, do that because it's for your personal growth. It's for the growth of a society. Um, it teaches you so much, no matter if it's sports or if it's music, but arts even more. It teaches so much um, in personal growth, um, in playing together with other people, in being a part of something bigger. And if you have the opportunity, go um, go that way against all struggles. It will not be easy, um, but it will be worse. I promise. Heidi, I'm sending you a big hug from Thailand, musical kisses, and I hope to be able to give you a live musical embrace in the very near future. Okay. It will happen. Uh, somewhere in the world it will happen i'm very sure i hope so thank you very much um also musical kisses from switzerland and um, take care all the best for you and see you soon money thank you heidi take care you. see you again okay yes. bye bye, bye.